Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. Today we go to Richmond for the second race of the playoffs in the Cup Series and the first race of the playoffs in the Xfinity Series where we have chosen Derek Krause to be our playoff driver this season in the Xfinity Series. There you see the playoff grid right now for the Cup. Uh, the drivers that are on the outside looking in. Jimmy Johnson, 16th. Uh, that's cut off uh, because of the game with a little bit of a cutoff glitch. He's over 20 points out after crashing last episode. But before we get into that, we got to go to the Xfinity Series where we had Krause in the car to start our playoff run and I can say that it was certainly not a good start to the playoffs for our team unlike last season with Haley Deegan. Krause started in the top 30 but unfortunately he would not last very long in the top 30. You can see very early on he's already dropping positions down to 28th going into turn 3 there on the first lap and he would fall outside the top 30 um, to about the midway point and he would actually have to avoid a spinning car of Morgan Shepard there. You see he went spinning. He was already down in the mid 30s at this point and it got even worse as he came out of turn two making contact with the car on his outside he would hit the inside wall keep control of the car but it would completely destroy his races he would fall down to the 40th position because he would have to come uh, to pit road to make repairs and he would come through on the final lap closing in on these cars that were ahead of him because he was a lap down due to pitting for repairs he would come through to finish 40th in the playoff opener here in Richmond for the Xfinity Series. So a very, very poor effort for Derek Krause. So the last two races we've had him in, he has made some big mistakes. And hopefully we can continue to keep our playoff hopes alive. But it's going to be tough now in the Xfinity Series. We'll see what he can do in the next episode. But now it's time to set our sights on the Cup Series race where uh, Richmond attract that we usually run half decent now we're coming into this race over 50 points to the good so if we just finish in the top 10 or so here in Richmond we will lock ourselves into the round of 12 at the end of this episode and we made it to the third and final round of qualifying currently sitting P5 and now down to six at this point we can continuing to fall down the ladder as we came out of turns four through the trial where we would come through to hit a 20.665 obviously we're not going to be on the pole for this race but we will start in the sixth position with Kevin Harvick once again on the front row for the second race of the playoffs. Hello everyone and welcome to Richmond Raceway for the running of the Federated Auto Parts 400. Tonight, we make our final stop at this three-quarter mile short track in Henrico County, Virginia. In previous years, this event marked the end of the regular season. But tonight, the stakes are even higher. A win at America's premier short track could move one of these drivers into the round of 12. With the unfamiliar Roval up next on the schedule, expect our contenders to really push to advance tonight. The NASCAR playoffs are in full swing, so let's go racing. All right, we are ready to go green here in Richmond to start the second race of the playoffs, the middle race of the first round. Eric Jones, a playoff driver, sent to the back after failing optical scanning station multiple times. So a playoff driver will have to work his way forwards here in Richmond as we're ready to go green from the sixth position with Harvick and Elliott on the front row. And the green flag is out. We are underway here for the second race of the playoffs now as we cross the line side by side with our Stuart Haas racing teammate of Clint Boyer. You will notice the mirror will be off quite a bit in this race, and I'll be looking behind me in instead because the frame rate is absolutely horrible at this racetrack when you have the mirror on but early on we battle alongside with the 22 going into oh, turn three on this first lap now martin truex jr looks to my inside a rival as we come into turn four as we come through the trial well he's going to make it known as he tries to crowd me towards the wall and we have to get out of the throttle we do barely get into the wall after truex put me up there and he's certainly letting it be known that he does not like us early on in this event and uh, these last few races, Truex has been giving us a lot of trouble, and he, he's got to know that we're not going to forget that uh, down the line. We still are battling it out for a championship with each other, so we're definitely going to have to maybe get him back at one point. By the time we came to lap three, running in the 10th position now, looking to the inside of the two of Keselowski, and we would take ninth away from him following uh, Larson on this bottom line. So we would clear Brad as we'd have to go a little defensive on the 48 of Johnson as they can just run the inside line so well out of turn four that they can gain so much time. It's really... Not very realistic, but it happens in this game at Richmond, unfortunately. And by the time we came to lap 13, we would work our way up to the seventh position behind sixth place of Larson. We just kind of followed him through, and we were all over his back bumper by this point as we came down the back straightaway. Looking to his inside now as we go into turn three, trying to move into the sixth position over the 42 now of Kyle Larson. And we would be able to just about clear him out of turn four, but he would be able to fight back as we cross the line heading down towards turns one as Denny Hamlin's up ahead on the back bumper of Truex as we would clear Larson into turns one as Jimmy 
Johnson, who's realistically in a must-win situation right now if he doesn't have a brilliant finish today, follows me through to take over the seventh position as we go into turns three, just continuing to set our sights on the cars up ahead of uh, the top five of Hamlin, Truex, and Harvick and whatnot as we went down to turns one. And by the time we came to just lap 22, Jimmy Johnson had fallen back and Chase Elliott had got to my back bumper and he was looking to my inside as we came across the line to hit two to go in the stage and I kind of let him have that bottom because I knew that I would much rather start the second stage on the inside line so I wasn't really going to fight the nine too much as we came down the back straightaway heading towards turn three approaching the final lap in stage one now as we battle side by side through the corner Elliott would come to turn four to clear me as we just can't turn the car like the AI can off the exit of turn four as the white flag is out in stage one Kurt Bush lurks behind as we come through turns one and two for the final time in this first stage now down the back straightaway close to the nine but obviously we're not going to try and pressure him too much as we go into turns three and turns four going a little bit wide there on the at the moment but we come into turn four very well and we will come through to finish stage one in the seventh position so a solid start to this race for us and if we can just have the next two stages go like this we will easily lock ourselves into the round of 12 on points as Kyle Busch picks up another playoff point to uh, add to his tally and that's not what we like to see we need to be getting some more playoff points ourselves now as we get ready to start the second stage behind Denny Hamlin and we're ready to go green here for stage two. The green flag is back out. We are underway here in Richmond from the seventh position here to start the second stage. On the back of the 11 of Hamlin, who battles alongside the nine of Chase Elliott as we go down into turns one. You can just see how much the frame rate struggles with the mirror on. So that's why exactly I don't have it on very much in this race. It's becoming a turn two down the back straightaway. Going into turn three side by side now with the nine of Elliott. Looking to the inside of our rival. Truex, he's already trying to get down on me as we come through the trial. Side by side with our rival. Certainly not not the best ideas we're going to turns one side by side with Martin Truex Jr. He's going to try to crowd me down to the apron, but we managed to get out of there without getting pushed onto the apron by him. As that, when it happened in real time, I just had the wheel turn directly to the right to counteract him trying to shove us onto the apron and wreck us. So thankfully, we got away with that, and he was the one that really got hurt from that situation as he lost about uh, three or four positions almost there as we go into turns one. Now in the fifth position behind Kevin Harvick as we have a chance to maybe pass him as we go down the back straight away getting into the wall a bit though and that would allow him to keep the position as we went down into turns three and obviously thankfully we've gotten away from the 19 of Truex for now hopefully we don't have to deal with him for the rest of the race now as we hit 19 to go in this second stage as Kyle Busch continues to lead right now as he's putting on a very solid performance right now as we come down the back straight away right on the back of our teammate of Kevin Harvick as we head into turns one on lap six though he would move up the track and allow me to look to his inside as we came down the back straight away and we would try to move into the fourth position as we went into turns three side by side with the four of Harvick and we would clear him to take over P4 now as we came out of turn four and set our sights now on the cars up ahead of Hamlin and Logano by the time we came to lap 11 of 22 in the stage Kyle Busch had pulled away from these front guys and we closed in a bit on Hamlin and Logano but the tires would start fading a little bit and that would allow Hamlin and Logano to just a little bit stretch out the gap here and there at times and the longer this stage went obviously the more my tires worn so we were losing time after time by the time we came to lap 13 you see how much they started pulling away because the tires really started falling off at about lap 12 or 13 of the stage so now it came to just about managing the tires over Kyle Larson behind now Kyle Larson he wouldn't hold on to that position uh, very long as we came through turns one and turns two heading to now two to go at this point in the stage you see Hamlin and Logano had pulled away a good significant amount but this time Kevin Harvick had actually gotten past uh, Larson and so did Truex who had worked his way back up here as we had just two to go in the stage and I was just holding on for dear life at this point as we came out of turn two down the back straightaway Harvick was all over my back bumper as we had to go a little bit of uh, defense mode into turn three trying to hold on to a fourth position here in the second stage but as we come out of turn four Harvick trying to look to my inside but we hang on as the white flag is in the air for stage two as we head down towards turn one Kyle Busch continuing to be in command as we kind of screw up the entrance to turn one and that allows the four of our teammate Harvick and the 19 of Truex who is our rival to get to our inside as we head down into turn three we're not going to do anything stupid here and try to battle Truex right now so we just settle in behind him as we come out of turn four we will finish the second stage 
Cage in the sixth position, which isn't the end of the world, obviously. It's a great finish for us, especially at Richmond here in the second stage. So I wasn't uh, very uh, concerned with the car because, really, we still managed to get a good finish when the tires were really worn. And now we would come to pit road, take two cans of fuel, four tires. We would give up a bunch of positions because the AI, of course, take two tires when they should take four. So we dropped down to P23. Certainly the pit logic doesn't make sense, but we would have to be in rebound right mode here. at this point as stage three is underway and the green flag is out for the final time possibly here in Richmond as we haven't had a caution yet now as we have just 48 to go here in Richmond as we head into turns one three wide with Ty Dillon. And we get into the back of our teammate of Eric Almirola now. As we come onto turn two, we get onto the apron and up the track we go. But we hang on to the car. Big save there as that could have been a complete disaster. And Jimmy Johnson was right there. We could have easily involved him if we had crashed and made his playoffs from bad to worse now. As we come through to complete the first lap. A dramatic start to this uh, or final stage here in Richmond as we go into turns one on the back bumper of Brendan gone as we come through the center of the corner running P24 and now to turn two we get out of the apron again but this time we make a very easy save as we only lost maybe a couple car lengths of time as we go into turns three side by side with Ryan Newman but now we're just continuing to make mistakes at this point in the race and Newman would get clear for a moment as we hit 46 to go, but we would stick it up the inside going into turns one and turns two, trying to pull ahead of the six car. We would do just that as we came out of turn two, going down the back straight away with just over 55 laps to go as we go into turns three. They battle three wide up ahead between Gon, McDowell, and Corey LaJoy as we come through the trial. We'll complete this lap and hit 45 to go, sorry, now as we go into turns one, not 55, as we go through onto the back bumper of Brendan Gon now on the inside of the 34 of Michael McDowell is coming down the back straightaway starting to work our way again through traffic so we're doing a decent there. job as we go into turn three on the back still Brendan gone we just yeah, haven't been yeah. able to get around this guy as we come out of turn four setting our sights on at least getting into the top 20 and by the time we came to lap 58 we had been uh, moved into the 21st position looking to the inside of our teammate of Clint Boyer as we came down the back straightaway and as we head into turn three, there's trouble behind, and this is the six of Careful, Ryan Newman, go who's going to go hard into the outside wall, and that's going to bring out a caution as he has blown a right front tire. He hits it again and comes down in front of traffic and comes back up. He is all over the road, but he would hang on and have to pit, and we would stay out, obviously, because uh, we don't need to pit, obviously, thankfully, and we will be We're restarting in the 20th position now be behind ready? Ty Dillon. So a little bit of drama here late in Richmond, not a playoff driver, so it's not a big concern as the green flag is back out. We start along the uh, outside of the number 40 car of Jamie McMurray as we head into turns one. I thought about maybe sending it up the inside of Ty Dillon, but then I thought better of it now as we come through turns one and turns two. We're just ha trying to have a clean ending to this race and maybe still get a top 10 out of it because we don't need to make any silly mistakes as we get into the back of Ty Dillon as he gets a little bit loose out of turn four, but thankfully he hangs onto the cars we battle alongside Michael McDowell. We've been getting a little bit unlucky here with some of these restarts uh, in this final stage, starting on the outside on this race start and obviously the apron uh, came into effect at the beginning of the stage as we battle three wide beside Go McDowell back. and Dylan as we go into turns three keep, keeping our nose in there just trying to get into the top 20 at this point as Boyer our teammates not having a great day he is not very safe in the playoffs right now he came into the playoffs 16th on the grid so he's certainly in need of a good run here as we come through turns one and two as he battles alongside Kurt Busch who won last episode and locked himself into the round 12 as we try to make a three wide with Clint uh, Boyer and Kurt Busch into turn three obviously we don't need to be racing our teammate too aggressive so we just try to make the move as quickly and cleanly as possible as we battle alongside the 38 of David Reagan we would be able to get past him as we went into turns one and set our sights on the cars up ahead now as we move into the 16th here with uh, just over 30 laps to go in Richmond and as we came to lap 72, we would make a move to the inside of Jamie McMurray as we had moved into the top 15 and had passed McMurray for 13th and now set our sights again on Jimmy Johnson up there in 12th as he would get to the inside of Alex Bowman. We would be able to run down Alex Bowman and we would pass the 88 car as well and move up into 12th behind Jimmy Johnson as we went into turn three now in lap 81 with 20 to go. But we would end up getting another caution as it was Martin Truex Jr. up ahead who had brought it out. I'm assuming he blew a tire or something. I could find in the replay mode but our rival Truex has had an issue and that brings up the caution that will send him towards the back another possible playoff implication as we get ready to go green the green flag is back out it's just over 15 to go now as we cross the line 16 to be exact as we have a chance to send it up the inside of the three in the 40 as we make a three wide into turns one now sticking our nose into the inside of the 11 of Hamlin as we battle three wide with him and Joey Logano as we exit turn two now inside the top 10 again as we come down the back straightaway heading down into turns three 
Kyle Busch continuing to lead this race in a dominant performance for him as Kyle Larson's up there in the second position. We haven't been in the top ten in a while, but it is certainly nice to be back up here as we head down into turns one and turns two. Clear of the 11 of Denny Hamlin and the FedEx Camry as we come out of turn two in the sixth position now, setting our sights on the cars up ahead of Elliott and Harvick as we try to work our way into the top five now as we join the party here through turns three and turns four. And we certainly had a fairly fast car on the short run in this race. So I was pretty confident that we might have something here to potentially at least get into the top five momentarily. But I'm not sure about holding on to it. But we'll see what we could do as we came down the back straightaway. Heading into turns one on lap 89 though. We would stick it up the inside of Kevin Harvick because we kind of made a dive bomb into the inside. With just over 10 to go at this point as we went down the back straightaway side by side with Harvick. And we would clear him through turns three and four. And a few laps later we would run down Kyle Larson as you see on the cinematic view here and we would send it up his inside as well going into turns one as we had so much speed that we were just able to lunge into the corner from multiple car lengths back and send it up the inside without running into another driver and we would pass Kyle Larson and move up into the fourth position so we were doing really well but you see behind Alex Bowman, Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson they were all right on my back bumper at this point as we had just eight laps to go so uh, certainly just trying to hang on because it didn't seem like we were going to be able to run down Almarola or Elliot or Kyle Busch so I was just trying to hang on to the fourth position position and as we came to just three to go approaching two laps ago we still had Bowman right on my back bumper Jimmy Johnson had moved into the uh, sixth Boy, position Boy, so he is having a great effort here late in Richmond it might not be enough though as he's still likely going to be in a must-win situation going into the Charlotte Roval and the elimination race next episode as we come down the back straightaway approaching the final lap here in Richmond Kyle Busch has dominated this race and he is going to continue the dominance as he takes a white flag as we cross the line just in front of Bowman as we just play all defense mode right now trying to hold on to a fourth place finish as we come through turns one and turns two. Almirola the best Stuart Haas car out there right now as he tries to increase his gap above the cut line as we go into turns three and four for the final time in Richmond just in front of the 200 cars Kyle Busch will come through to win in Richmond and we will come through to edge out the 88 of Alex Bowman for a fourth place finish so a great finish for us here in Richmond considering how we started the final stage it didn't look like we were going to maybe even get a top 10 but we got fourth so a great effort and now we'll get to see the playoff grid now as we come out of Richmond so we're definitely well above the cut line obviously we're probably locked in now and we look at the playoff grid we are officially locked into the next round so we don't have to worry at all going into the rubble we can go for that win and hopefully we can do that ryan blaney and hamlin are tied right now but hamlin has a tiebreaker boyer johnson and menard must win and then we have four drivers that are realistically um can battle it out for that last couple of positions one guy at least will not make it as we have matt de benedetto who is very happy with us kevin harvick's very happy with us so that's good uh quinn boyer must um said must have been a mistake so he's not very happy with us and then ty dylan's not very happy with us and we provoke ty dylan because it's ty dylan who's always in the way of me on the track when he's running in the mid-20s uh all jokes aside though he's a fairly talented driver i guess but in the next episode we will be going to the charlotte roval to decide the 12 drivers who will continue to fight for a championship and it's going to be a good one i love racing at the roval and you see there almarola jones Hamlin and Blaney all get to battle it out for those last few positions in the round of 12. So I will see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very, very appreciated. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and other videos. Thank you for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys in the next one for the Roval. Have yourselves a great day.